So today I wanted to go over five common mistakes, I think, that coconut anglers make. Um, <laughs> uh, the first I was going to talk about is flatlining. And when is the best time to flatline? Now, a lot of times in early spring, kokanee anglers go out and they just don't catch fish. They don't mark fish. And they like, oh, we couldn't find the fish today. And that's because typically when those water temperatures are in that 50 to 60 degree range, those fish are going to be feeding right on the surface. And you're just not going to pick them up because of avoidance of the boat. And your transducer cone just isn't going to pick up isn't that wide when it's shallow. So you're just not going to detect fish on the fish finder when you're catching fish on the surface. And that's why you want to employ flatlining. Another thing is fish get particularly line shy in the spring, or boat shy, I mean. And you want to put some distance between you and the boat when you're flatlining. So, you know, get it out there at least a hundred feet. Whew. Nice kokanee. Doesn't want to come in yet. Nice. That's a good 19 inch kokanee. To start the day off, I'll take it. It might be 20. There you go. That's a nice size kokanee. Beautiful. Caught it flatlining. Now, a second mistake that a lot of kokanee anglers make is they do not turn frequently enough. You'll notice if we review that footage of the fish that I just caught and many other fish that I've caught, the bite a lot of times comes on that turn. Um, sometimes it'll hit on the outside rod because they're looking for something for a little bit more speed. They're following that gear. They see it speed up as you make that turn, that outside rod speeds up, they slam it. They might be looking for something a little bit slower and they might hit that inside rod, especially as it starts to drop. And if you're running dodgers, you get a nice little wobble on them. So make sure that you're turning. I see, especially powerboat anglers, get far too comfortable just trolling in a straight line. And uh, it just doesn't make any sense if you want to put more coconut in a boat. You need to be turning more frequently uh, than you are. I try and turn at least every 100 yards. And sometimes just a little juke and jive uh, left and right. And then you can continue on your line. But sometimes that'll be just enough to get a fish to bite. Whoa! He threw it. <laughs> that was a big hit. Ooh. He actually bent that hook. That's crazy. That's enough. Never had a kokanee bend a hook before. So the third most common mistake is trolling too fast. I see time and time again, I'm out there and I'm catching kokanee and people come up to me and they ask me, what am I doing? And while they're talking to me with their gear deployed, they're going past me and they're trolling at, you know, 1.7, 1.8 or higher. You really got to get those speeds sub 1.5. I'm not saying there's not times kokanee won't hit faster speeds, but they really do prefer that 1.5 
to 1.2 range. That seems to be the ideal. You know, maybe in ultra cold water, you might want to slow that down a little bit more, closer to one mile per hour. But it seems like those fish are very uh, unwilling to pursue quickly trolled lures. Um, if you notice you're going out and everybody else is catching kokanee or catching more rainbow trout, it's probably because you're trolling too fast. So you've got to find some way to slow your speeds down. That's well, pretty good. It's not as uh, feisty as the last one I got. Uh, that's decent. Just didn't put up as much of a fight. Pop that on my homemade fly. So. A fourth common mistake is leaving fish to find fish. This is something that never made sense to me. And I seen it just this morning. A boat came through here, they picked up a fish, and then they just left. I went through here this morning, I got one fish. I came right back to the same area uh, because I'm not gonna leave fish to find fish. The other boat's long gone. Here I am with another trophy kokanee, and I'm done for the day. Uh, just because I stuck to the same area. So you hit a fish, turn around, hit the same area again. Even if it takes a little bit to turn around, just start doing figure eights. I always do at least two passes over the same spot. If I pick up a kokanee there, I'm gonna drop a pin on my fish finder. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna hit that spot at least two more times. If I don't get anything, then I might move on. No. Shit. I knew that was gonna happen. That is gonna go on the bloopers reel. <laughs> Good thing they float. <laughs> uh, and the final tip I wanna make is to talk about the thermocline. I think a lot of anglers don't fully utilize the thermocline. If you go out into a lake, you know, mid spring, mid summer, and you not, you're not marking fish, you're not confident where they're at, but you are marking that thermocline, put one of your lines right on that thermocline. A lot of time those kokanee are gonna hold right below that thermocline. Um, a lot of times the Daphnia you know, and the little microplankton that they feed on are gonna be holding on that thermocline because at nighttime those Daphnia and plankton come up to the surface to feed and then they drop back down to that thermocline and those kokanee like to hold there too because that's where the food's at and they can avoid the heat stress of being up in that warmer uh, water up top and they can be down and comfortable in that cooler water well that does it for me i'm about ready to go out and fight some chop to get back to the boat ramp if you guys have any questions just let me know in the comments below hopefully these tips help make you a better kokanee angler and i'll see you next time out on the water bye guys <laughs>